Good morning and welcome to Garson to the Opera's Design Challenge this week. We're going to be exploring Rossini's The Barber of Seville and we've got designer Ruth Payton with us. Good morning, Ruth. Good morning, Karen. Lovely to be here with you. Thanks so much for joining us. So think, 18th century hilarious comedy. There is a character called Rosina. She's a young girl and she has a guardian called Dr. Bartolo and he is really, really strict and he doesn't let her do any of the things that a young girl of her age would want to be doing. And even though she is actually quite well behaved, when you're told not to do something, who is likely to do it more? I don't know if I should be admitting that, but yeah, it makes you want to rebel, doesn't it? This title is also called The Barber of Seville. So this tells me that it's going to have something to do with hairdressing, right? And at the moment in lockdown, lots of us are struggling because we're not getting our hair done in the way that we normally would. So I'm wondering if we can take anything, any advice, any tips from these folk in the 18th century. And Ruth, I just wondered if you might be able to help us a bit with our hair this week. Well, yes, and the 18th century is a perfect period to look at because during that period, the hair for men and women got more and more extravagant and bigger and bigger as the century went on. Well, women would not necessarily wear wigs, but they would go to the hairdresser and have their hair done in the most ornate styles. If you think of Marie Antoinette, she was um, a, a big leader in fashion there. Have you got a photograph to show us? Yeah, I think there's a etching here of a woman having her hair done by a barber. And you can see how tall and, and grand that hair is. Whoa. And what about men? What would they look like? Well, the men were equally flamboyant. They didn't tend to use their own hair. They had wigs made for them by barbers. And so barbers became incredibly popular people. Um, and here's an here's a etching of a gentleman sporting a style called the macaroni. <laughs> Are we gonna be uh, making something like that this week? I, I completely love it. I can just see it, I can see it now. Yes, well, we might do a more everyday style, but we're definitely going to attempt to do something with a bit of height and some curls to it. Fantastic. Um, Let's get going with our design challenge. Great. So obviously we don't have any real hair to make wigs with, so we're going to be making it this week out of paper. And I've got one that I made earlier here. And this is this wig is made using brown parcel paper, but you could also use newspaper, which would work also very well. I'm just going to put this on for you to show you how it works. Fabulous. I am definitely thinking this is going to help us all with our Zoom party. Yeah. <laughs> Inside, you can see that the hair is stuck onto something we call a skull cap, which is a bit like a hat that fits very closely to your head. So let's start by making one of those. Now this is a job which is much easier if you have someone to help you. It's not very easy to do it on yourself. I'm going to use this ball as my model and show you what needs to be done. So we have a square of thin plastic. It could be a plastic bag that you cut up or a bit of packaging, but you cut it into a square and you place it over the head. And then around the head, but above the ears, you're going to take that down to make a sort of band around the head, which is going to hold it on and keep it in place. There we are. Now, we need to make it a bit stronger. So we need to put in a piece of tape that goes from front to back. So I'm going to do that now. This is masking tape, but you could also use sellotape if that's what you have at home. And just so that I remember, I'm going to put a star there to remind me that that is the middle. Then we need another cross piece which is going to go from ear to ear. So let's do that now. From there all the way around. And I want to remind myself that this is ear to ear, so I'm going to put an E on each side for ear. There we are. Now I've 
to make this a lot stronger, you, you need to add more and more tape. But I've got one that I did earlier to show you what I mean. Here it is. So you can see I've added tape over the top, but there's my star marking the front. And then I also have an E marking the middle. And actually I'm gonna draw a line across the piece of tape that goes from ear to ear because that is where we're going to start making our wig and it's quite important that we follow that line. So we need to attach our hair and our hair as I said before is going to be made from lengths of paper. I've used brown parcel paper and before you get started I would cut your strips of paper. We need two lengths some which are quite long, 50 centimetres, and some which are much shorter, these 25 centimetres. And they're both roughly two centimetres wide, but you don't need to measure it with a ruler, you can just do it freehand. You're going to need 40 long ones and around 12 short ones. So cut those in advance so they're all ready, and then we can start sticking them on to our skull cap, our wig cap. I'm going to start at one of the E's and I'm going to follow that line all the way around to the other E, taking one of my long strips and fixing it with tape. And then another long strip, slightly overlapping, following that line, fixing it with tape. I'll just do one more to show you. There it is and another piece of tape. I actually cut my tape in advance as well because it makes it much easier. So if we carry that all the way around that line, you end up with something that looks like this. So that's, that's the bottom part of the wig, but we need to add another row of hair and we're gonna do that along the front here. So if you take, another long strip and you place it on that star that we did before, that we drew on before, and stick that down. And then I'd like you to do five either side of that, making a total of 11. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. I'm just going to stick them down all at once to speed things up, but you can do it more carefully than me. There we go. And then you're going to put another five on the other side. And then we'll have our two layers of hair, which will look like this. It's beginning to look a bit more wig-like, but we need an another row to create a fringe. Now, we're still using the long strips and this time instead of putting them on top we're going to turn the wig upside down and we're going to stick them on the inside and we're going to stick another 12 or so along the front there working our way along and I'll show you what that will look like when you've done it There we are, so I've stuck them all along the front there. So we end up with a wig with a long, long fringe and then two layers of hair down the back. I know that you're gonna do more with that, Ruth, but I'm actually thinking that I'd quite like that as it is. I quite fancy wearing it <laughs> as it is. And of course, if you, uh, you can, Ruth's using a ball there, but you could use a watermelon or a cabbage, I guess. Yeah, or, or probably best if you've got somebody there with you, maybe they might opt in to being your model. <laughs> it would be very easy if you had a model, but I'm going to use my trusty ball because now it's the fun bit. We get to style this hair. And as you remember from the picture, what the men really liked was a bit of height. So I'm going to leave the fringe hanging down the front and gather up all of the other bits of hair to make a ponytail at the back and I'm going to tie that with this ribbon. We're going to work a bit more on that later but this will just keep it out of the way. I'm going to tie a bow 
Now, now I can look at the fringe. So to create this big fringe, the height that we saw in that picture, we're just going to take all of this extra long pieces of paper and gather them together and then start rolling them towards the wig. And if I turn this around, I think you can see that that's made of a big bouffant front to my wig. So I'm just going to secure that in place now with some tape. And that is the main part of the structure done. There we are. But you'll see that there are some spaces either side of the fringe. And we need to fill those in. Um, and that's where your shorter pieces of tape, uh, shorter pieces of paper are going to come into use. So these are the ones which are 25 centimeters long. And I'm gonna show you a fun trick for making these lengths of paper curl because the, what the men loved were these ringlets of hair. Now, I've got a lolly stick here and you need something which is strong and flat to do this. If you don't have a lolly stick, you could use a pair of blunt scissors, but I'm not gonna use the sharp side you can just use the top edge, but do get a, a grown up to watch you doing that. But the lolly stick works just as well. And to create the curl, you place the paper on top of the stick, you hold it down with a thumb, and you pull as hard as you can to create a curl. So if I do that a couple of times, there we are. It might take you a little bit of practice, but once you've got the trick, you can do this on all sorts of things like ribbon. There's one more. And then with these curls, you're going to fill in any gaps that you see on your wick. Um, let me just bring that a bit more into the shot so you can see that. Yeah, so these spaces here, I'm going to fill in with these little curls. And I'm going to do that on both sides. And once I've filled in, the curls on both sides, I'm gonna curl the ponytail. And that's really fun because then you end up with this wig like that. And it gives it a lot of movement, there we are. I absolutely love that finished wig and it really looks like a gentleman might look at that time. Um, I've got a picture here actually that might show us that look of a gentleman of the time there he is there's another one actually there he is and you can That's see right. the ponytail you can see the ponytail there as well and i think i'd love to see ruth modeling the wig the finished wig sure. lovely i'm definitely <laughs> definitely thinking it might need some finishing touches perhaps a mustache Oh yes, well the men of course did have some really amazing moustache styles to match their hairstyles and uh, this is a very simple addition but there's my moustache. Um, I'll show you how to make that very quickly. All you need is a piece of black card or paper and fold it in half and with a pencil you're going to draw half of your moustache shape. I'm going to make this one, whoops, broke my leg. I'm going to make this one very curly. There we are. Whoa. Just made that one up as I went along. And now I'm going to cut it out and cutting both sides of paper at the same time. And that way I'm going to have a moustache which is identical on both sides. It'll be a mirror image. Now you can make yours as crazy as you want. I'm doing this one very quickly. But you can take more time over yours. There we are. And if I open that up, that is a bit of a Groucho Marx moustache. We need to fix that. And the easiest thing is to use a pencil or a pen with a bit of tape. 
to hold it in place like that. Absolutely love it. So we're all sorted to look like an 18th century man there. And obviously you could create your own styles using the, the basics of that concept. So I'm really looking forward to see the designs that you all come up with. Don't forget to send them in to us. Thank you this morning, Ruth. And we will see you all on our Monday motivation at 10 a.m. to explore Rossini's The Barber of Seville. Have a great time making your designs. Bye.